Hello and in this tutorial what I want to do is um, talk you through uh, the rest of the uh, node graph or or the, the nuke composite okay so this is the node graph here uh, that we're using uh, to actually create this composite of this chair on this uh, uh, in this scene here okay uh, let me just um, maximize this so you can see a little bit more what's going on okay right so this is the camera track this is what we've done so far in terms of tracking the footage okay um, and then uh, uh, and then what I want to do is just quickly talk you through um, the other bits that, that that I'm doing so in terms of creating the 3d element or the chair I'm bringing the chair in here if I just zoom into that bringing the chair into here so um, my chair is actually made up of two pieces okay and then these geo transform nodes these are actually moving the chair into place and then this axis is controlling the two geo transform nodes so that this so that it's, so that it's putting both of these elements or that make up the chair in place for me the fong is just a material that we're putting onto the chair and then obviously those two parts that make up the chair uh, in this case it's the soft padding and the legs as so separate elements they are then added to my scene okay then what I want is because I've got this chrome effect here. What I need is some environmental light that's kind of reflecting off the chrome effect, and you'll see we've got some environmental light here. And what I've done is I've took some pictures of some chrome balls. I'll just quickly show you this. Okay, so here's some pictures uh, that I've took. Of, um, let me have a look. Uh, yeah, there we go. So you can see there's two pictures here of chrome balls that I've created. These are HDRI images. So they were taken at different brackets. Uh, and then combined in Photoshop. Um, so these are two images here. I've got a tutorial that's going to talk you through creating all of this in more detail anyway. But what I've done in this environmental light is I've basically combined this chrome ball with uh, this chrome ball uh, to create this image here, which is a 360 image. Uh, I then blurred that, and you can see that I'm using this as an environmental light. On top of my, my environmental light, I've also got a spotlight, and this spotlight is shining onto a card. The card is basically a 3D plane, and all the card is there for, so if I go back to my, uh, let's just go back to the final output, all the card is there for is to produce this shadow. So it's just there uh, with this fill material just to capture the shadow that's, that's that's falling onto it. Again, the environment light, the spotlight and the card are all added to my scene as is the other scene. Um, there's no real need to use separate scene nodes, it's just like a, a nice way of building up your scene. So everything in this scene then is then added to this scene and you can kind of build up your scene uh, uh, accordingly if you want to. Okay. Uh, finally, I'll, I go to composite it. Now, before I composite it, what I need to do is render out the chair with the shadow and all the other bits. Okay. Now, um, in doing that, what I do is uh, the camera that was created here. So you could probably see a bit more clearly if I move the camera up here. The camera that was created by our camera tracking those. So all of this bit that we're not really using actually. So we're not really using any of this. We could just delete all of this actually. Okay. Um, that's created by the camera tracking node um, uh, but the one thing we are using is this camera okay so this is the camera that was created by the camera tracker and um, we're not rendering this scan line renderer we're rendering this scan line render here which is obviously connected to our, which our chair scene is connected to okay but uh, basically um, uh, so basically what I'm doing is uh, this camera here is simply a clone of that camera. All I did was go right click, right click and clone. I'm looking for clone in here somewhere. I should be able to do that. Uh, I'm sure it'll be in there somewhere. Uh, all I did was simply clone that camera, uh, that camera node. Okay. Unless I... Yeah. Uh, so basically what I did is I cloned that camera node. So this camera node here is an exact copy of that camera node. Okay. So so the camera node that's generated that was generated by this camera tracker is the same here. You can see they're called, both called camera one. Okay. I'm feeding that in so that I'm actually rendering this scene from the camera that was generated by the camera tracker, i.e. the whole purpose of using the camera tracker, if you remember, was 
to create a virtual version of the actual camera that was used to shoot the scene that we can then shoot our chair from okay and that's this camera here so anyway hopefully hopefully that that made sense so that's a copy of the camera there then what we're doing is we're then just applying um, uh, some so at the moment this scan line render is basically taking our chair and creating it as a 2d version of our chair so um, uh, uh, yeah, so it's taking our 3D world, rendering it. So after this point, our chair is now in 2D. It's, it's just like an image that we can grade and work with, just like any other video or, or image in Nuke. Okay, so all I've done here is apply various things to try and make this fit into the scene better. I, I could work on this a bit more if I wanted to, um, um, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I think it works fine. So. All I've done is grape, apply a grade to the chair, saturation, a slight blur, a bit of a bit of grain, okay? You might want to apply grain to the whole image rather than just the chair. But at the moment, this is all this is the scan line renders taking our chair, rendering it in 2D, and then what we're doing is is applying various bits of treatment to that 2D image to kind of make it work with this scene. At this point, we actually merge the chair, the 2D image of the chair, with our background. So here I'm taking the background, this is the original footage, okay, and I'm, and I'm combining it, okay. This bit here will make more sense in a moment when, we, when I talk about it in more detail, but basically the shadow that I'm generating from this spotlight is actually being written to a custom color channel that I've created called Spotlight, okay, and then what I'm doing is using that custom channel as an alpha layer, uh, so if I go into here, this is the grade node here, I'm actually using the spotlight shadow channel that I've created here as a mask for this grade and then all I'm doing with the grade is actually just making this floor here slightly darker in order to kind of mimic a shadow okay the final thing I really want to talk you through with this scene so again we're going to go into all these in more detail I'm just giving you an overview of what we're doing the final thing that I want to talk you through is uh, lens distortion. So there's a couple of different workflows for working with lens distortion. Um, so if I just talk you through what we've done at the moment, we're bringing in our footage, and then what we're doing is we're analyzing, we, we analyze this lens distortion grid to create this lens distortion node. Then what we did was, um, uh, then what we did was, and once we've analyzed the footage with this lens distortion node, the data of that lens distortion is stored in the lens distortion node. So you'll notice that it's not connected to the lens distortion node now. Um, that's because we don't want it to be, okay? Uh, because I want to put this footage into the lens distortion node, okay? I don't want to undistort the lens distortion grid, I want to undistort this. So I feed it in there to analyze it, and then once I've analyzed it, I disconnect it and put my source footage in. But the data of that lens distortion that was generated via uh, from analyzing that grid is stored on that node. That's the important thing. So my workflow is that I'm going to I take my footage, undistort it, and then I'm tracking the undistorted footage. Okay, and then I'm merging, uh, and then I'm merging my 3D model here, my 3D model here, with the undistorted footage. And then to make it look more natural, right at the end of the process, I've actually this lens distortion three is actually just a copy. It's an exact. It's, it's literally a, a copy and paste of this lens distortion node here that we've created. And all I've done, I'm just going to close these so that makes it clear. So this is lens distortion two. This is the one that's applying the, the distortion. You can see I've got undistort checked in here. And then this is undistort three. So sorry, it just confuses things. So this is undistort three. Um, so that's this this lens distortion node here now, and you'll notice that that the underscore is not checked. So this is reapplying the distortion. But again, by taking an exact copy of the distortion node that we created by analysing the distortion grid, um, uh, I've still got that distortion data. All I do is by unchecking that on the copy, that now works as a redistortion node. Okay. So hopefully, just hopefully you'll, you'll understand how I've done that. I've basically analyzed the grid to create, so I've analyzed the grid using the distortion node. The data of that distortion node is stored on there. By taking a copy of that, I can then use, of that node, uh, make copy and pasting that node, I can then um, um, obviously uh, use that 
that copy also has the same distortion data on it so then I can use that to undistort it here Correct. now just to give you an idea of what that workflow is um, I've just sort of done a little um, uh, slide thing here let me just see if I can actually put it up here okay so um, what I've got here is, is is what we're doing is this workflow here so what we're doing is we're taking the distortion grid analyzing the distortion using that to undistort the footage at the beginning of it we track we merge with our 3D element here and then what we do is re-distort the footage and the re reason for doing that is to make it look a bit more natural now there is another workflow we can do so you'll notice uh, hopefully some of you will notice that there's another lens distortion node and that might be confusing the situation a little bit just here this lens distortion node was generated by the camera tracker so if I if in the camera tracker uh, again I'm just going to double click on this okay so if in the camera tracker I selected um, unknown lens what it would attempt to do is from from as, as well as res using all those points that it's tracking to resolve where the camera is in 3D space, it would also use that data to try and work out what the distortion in the lens was for that camera. Okay, so it would try and figure out what that distortion is. And it would create a lens distortion um, uh, node from doing, from, from, from doing that. Okay, um, now in this case, we're not using this node, but you could use that. Okay, so in effect the lens distortion rather than the lens distortion being informed by this by this um, grid here it's informed by the camera track okay so what does that workflow but that does have implications on how we're working with the workflow and the reason for that is because at this point here the the actual source footage is not being um, uh, the source footage is not being undistorted okay that's the key thing so that, that that that's the that's the key part of that okay that the that the, when we're doing this workflow the source footage is not being undistorted okay let me show you what that workflow looks like so that's this workflow here again I'm going to try and there we go uh, so we've got the footage we track it that track creates a distortion grid okay and then what we do is we just take our 3d element and we simply just apply the distortion because remember the 3d element is never distorted and this is the problem that we're trying to solve we then just apply that distortion to the 3d element and then merge it so it achieves the same thing but it's just a different workflow okay so that is my um, overview of of this um, uh, of this uh, node graph. Okay, um, as I say, I'm going to talk you through all these elements in more detail, uh, but I just wanted to give you an overview before we continued.